The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Problem 1 states a double-decker bus is traveling at 10 meters per second. If a child in the bus throws a ball horizontally out of the window from a height of 5 meters above the ground with a velocity of 5 meters per second in the direction perpendicular to the side of the bus, with what speed does the ball hit the ground measured relative to the ground in meters per second? So, got a few different things going on in here. Got my best to draw out a picture. So we have a bus and it's moving. And a bus is traveling 10 meters per second. Now the child throws the ball actually horizontally out. So he kind of throws it out so it kind of goes like that. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of trying to draw it on our XYZ coordinate axis like that. So, the trick to this problem is not only do we have a projectile motion situation because the ball, is thrown, the ball is thrown horizontally out of the bus and then of course accelerates due to gravity, so it has a horizontal velocity and then when it hits the ground it has a vertical component, the bus is also traveling in a third dimension, completely unrelated to the other two. So we have to actually worry about the velocity in three different directions. So let's look at just the projectile motion part. acceleration is downwards, therefore negative. Now, I'm going to use 10. Uh, I recommend you guys use 9.8, but I know that they most of the time the professors actually use 10, so this will actually give us the exact right answer. It's not going to mess you up. You're going to get something very, very close if you use 9.8, and sometimes the professor does use 9.8, but I highly recommend you always use 9.8, but for convenience sake, and to actually mimic exactly what the professor does, I'm going to figure out using negative 10. That said, now don't forget if something's thrown horizontally, you always know the initial velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. Alright, and that's our last term. So, we're looking for the total velocity when it hits the ground. So, what we are trying to solve for right here is the y velocity, the vertical velocity when it hits the ground. So, we're going to look and say, well, we know zero, negative 10, negative 5, those are three variables. We have to just pick the right equation, which in this case is going to be vf squared is equal to vi squared plus a, oops, excuse me, 2a delta y. Alright, so we're looking for vf squared. We know vi squared is 0, so therefore we just have 2 times negative 10 times negative 5. Cancel, VF squared equals 100, thus our VF is equal to 10. Now, don't forget. 
forget uh, this equation actually won't tell you what direction the velocity, the final velocity is. You have to assume that yourself, but hopefully you can see this and we don't need down here because just this equation doesn't incorporate the negative into it as the answer. So we know it's going to be 10 meters per second downwards in the vertical. So let's kind of look at our graph. So if this is our x, this is our y, and there's a z, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we have our x as 5 meters per second. We know that. Now we just solved for our y. This doesn't exactly incorporate the picture. Um, it's actually a little, it's rotated. But what matters is that we have the three magnitudes and we know that they're all perpendicular to one another. Each one is on its own axis. So the good news is uh, solving for this isn't too bad once you've gotten this far. Because the velocity is just going to be the sum of the squares. So we have our, in the x direction we have our 5. In the y we have our we have our 10. So our velocity is going to be equal to the square root of 225, or just 15 meters per second. Now, this is going to be the total velocity, including all three axes, at which it hits right before it hits the ground. And that's going to be your answer for problem one. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu